Welcome to EduRev. Now, how were these kingdoms administered? As we know, these were big kingdoms, and they spent a lot of money. They had a army. They had a navy. They built temples, so they needed a lot of money. The biggest source of revenue, the most the revenue, was land revenue. Land revenue was the most important. 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 The most For example, Hari Sena was also given the position of Mahadand Nayak, that is Chief Judicial Officer, just like his father. At many times, one person held many positions. A person who held many positions was given many positions, so that they become or they remain loyal to the king. For example, there was Nagar Shreshti or the Chief Banker or the Merchant. Then there was Sarthav. Sarthav was the leader of the merchants. and then there was pratham kulika that is a chief craftsman these type of positions were appointed by the king and many of them were hereditary is was a kai hereditary pass on hoti thi from one generation to the other generation the kings had a large army well organized they had many elephants chariots cavalry foot soldiers ab itne sare log honge to obviously kharcha to ho gayi so now they had to be given money Now it was difficult to give them cash in the form of gold every single time. So what the rulers used to do, instead of paying them regular salary, they were given grant of land. उनको जमीन दे दी जाती थी कि this land now belongs to you. You can give this land to someone, take rent from the people living on those lands, या आप आगे किराए पे दे दो या whatever you want. You can collect revenue from this land. अब इससे अभी short term में तो ये चीज़ ठीक है that you don't have to give salary to your soldiers you just give them land but in the long run this was not good why because in the long run so much land was given to the military to the military rulers ki king ke paas khud ka land hi nahi bacha tha so in the short term it was fine the king did not have to give money or gold or revenue to the army but in the long run it was not a good decision because king himself did not have the money Now in South India there are a number of assemblies that were made. Assemblies means different groups of people, especially in the Pallava Kingdom. There were different types of agency. For example, Sabha. Sabha means assembly of Brahmin land owners where only Brahmins used to live. They had different sub committees to work for different things. Irrigation ki alag sub committee thi, agriculture operation for making road etc. Just like a government. Then there was another assembly. Its name was Or. Or was the village assembly where land owners were not Brahmins. So, जहाँ land owners Brahmins होते थे, जिस गांव में उनकी लोगों की assembly या panchayat हुआ था तो सभा, where the people were non-Brahmins, they were called Or. Then there is another term called Nagaram. Nagaram or Nagaram was the organization of the merchants. So the merchants came together to form their own association. These merchant assemblies were controlled by rich and powerful landowners and the merchant, which is very very obvious. And they took control of all the trade. There were also common people. A common people के बारे में कई लोगों से हमें कई चीजों जानने को मिलता. For example, Kalidas, very famous poet of that time. He, Kalidas was during the Gupta Empire. He wrote a number of plays. Famously, Kalidas के plays में बहुत interesting चीज देखने को मिलती है. क्या? The characters who were kings and Brahmin, जो characters उनकी play में kings और Brahmins थे, उनके जो dialogue थे, they were in Sanskrit. And the characters of women and other men below the king, उन वो प्राकृत बोलते थे, मतलब common man's language. He famously wrote Abhijyan Shakuntala, which is a story between the king Dushyant and a young lady called Shakuntala. Very very famous book, even regarded one of the best plays ever written till now. Chinese pilgrim Fa Jian. He also noticed that people in that time were treated as untouchable. So there was an untouchable class also. In fact, they were so badly treated that they were not allowed to enter town or market. So a a piece of wood basically रखा जाता था अगर कोई enter कर जाता था कोई untouchable में से piece of wood was kept to keep that person separate. इतना ज़्यादा untouchability थी. जब भी कोई ऐसी पीस ऑफ वोट की साउंड आती थी तो पता चलता था अच्छे से अनटचेबल जा रहे हैं 
and you have to go away from them so there was untouchability in that time accounts have also been given by buildings paintings and books of that time iron pillar bahut zyada famous hai in mehroli it's about i don't know 5 kilometers from the place where i live so mehroli in delhi has a very famous iron pillar it's commendable why is it famous because it is rust free even today 1500 saal ho gaye still it does not rust it is made up of iron 7.2 meters high i'll show you a photo it the pillar says it was made by a king called chandra of the gupta dynasty but it's still not clear which exact king was it because there were multiple kings by the name of chandra in the gupta dynasty it has not rusted over these years there are many other buildings made up of bricks and stones for example stupas stupa means mount so stupas were basically built by buddhist in the center of the stupa relics of the buddha were kept means relics means something in his remembrance and then over this a structure was made called the stupa so a small box was kept at the heart at the or the center of the stupa they usually contain body remains of both or his followers remains such as bones teeth ashes etc or coins or stones associated with them this basket was called or relic this box was called a relic casket covered with the earth so earth ke andar rakha jata tha aur uske upar this structure was made called the stupa dome like structure and was covered with stone slabs as this is the meroli iron pillar this is in meroli still rust free in visit it's in the kutub minar complex now i'll also show you the photo of stupa stupa also is a very very important topic and it has been asked multiple times in the prelims and the mains examination as well when you see the photo of stupa you will see when you visit a stupa you can take a round around the stupa this is called pradakshin path it is surrounded by railings the entrance path was through the gateways and the devotees could take round in the clockwise direction to show their devotion these railings were decorated with many sculptures jatak stories mainly earliest hindu temples were also made during this time vishnu shiv durga these were worshiped in sabke temples banaye gaye the the most important part of temple in north india was garb grah garb grah was the area where the chief deity was kept so jo main murti thi wo garb grah mein rakhi jati thi over garb grah there was a shikhar of so for example if this is the garb grah there was a dt cat over this a tall structure was made called the shikhar priests performed religious sacrifice religious rituals in the garbhagriha only often as a bhitar gaon or tower or the shikhar was built at the top of the garbhagriha most temples also had a place called mandap mandap matlab wo hall jahan pe people could assemble yahan pe aarti vagaira ke liye this was called mandap This is a photo of a stupa. You can see this easily. It has markings of what are the different parts of stupa. This is important for your examination. You can take a screenshot of this and try to remember this. Now, stupas and temples were huge, and they could not be built by common people. It required a lot of money. That is why usually traders, merchants, kings, queens, they were the ones who used to spend money on building these. the carvings on the stones the drawings the sculptures all of that needed money so that is why only when the kings or the rulers wanted they could build these kind of structures when devotees came to visit temples or the stupas they also brought gifts to decorate the building for example the famous sanchi stupa has a very beautiful gateway this was donated or this was given by association of ivory workers ivory workers the sanchi stupa mein decorated gateway pura diya tha decoration were also given by merchants farmers they also gave many perfumes and many other things were given as gifts and they were inscribed on pillars railings and the walls of the stupas as well as the temples apart from this we also have amazing paintings of that time mainly the ajanta caves where many paintings were kept these were caves that were carved out in the form of monasteries for the buddhist monks many of them were decorated with paintings the colors are visible even today these colors are made up of plants as well as minerals we don't know who made these paintings but these are some of the paintings and as you can see the colors are visible even today after more than 1500 years 
then many other books were written during that time also just to remind you many questions are asked from the books of that time in the prelims examination so it is important there were many epics written in tamil language for example selapadikaram was written uh, selapadikaram was composed by a poet called ilangu it is a very famous story about a merchant called kovalam who lived in pohar or kaveri patnam he fell in love with a lady working in the court called madhavi although he had a wife called kannagi so kovalan and kannagi were married but kovalan for for fell in love with madhavi now later on kovalan and kannagi left pohar and went to madurai where he was accused by the court jeweler of the pandya king that he had stolen something and thus the king sentenced kovalan to death kannagi still loved him and he and she now took anger and she was very angry because of this injustice and she destroyed the entire city of madurai to have revenge of her husband this is the story of selapadi karam written by elango why i am telling you the story is there have been times when a story of the book has been asked in one or two sentences in the prelims examination another tamil epic uh, the money make lie it was written by satana it is a continuation of the story it describes the story of kovalam and madhavi's daughter then there are other writers such as kalidas who wrote in sanskrit many other hindu religious stories were written in the same time such as the puranas puran as you mean as you know means old so purans can contain stories about gods goddesses like vishnu durga shiv parvati etc they contain details of how they were worshiped and also about the creation of god and about the kings they were written in sim- simple sanskrit and they could be heard by anyone women shudras etc while the vedas were only to be heard by the brahmins the puranas were available for everyone to hear and to recite two sanskrit epics mahabharat ramayana were also written during this time mahabharat as you know is about the war fought between the kauravas and the pandavas who were the cousins this was a war to gain control of their capital hastinapur other types of books were also written <clears throat> both puranas and mahabharat were believed to be compiled by vyas Bhagavad Gita is included as a part of Mahabharat. Ramayana was also written, as all of you know, it's about Lord Ram, the Prince of Kosal, who came back from the exile after defeating Ravan and returned to Ayodhya, the capital of Kosal. Valmiki is considered as an author of Sanskrit version of the original Ramayana. Many non-religious scientific books were also written. For example, Aryabhat, very famous mathematician and astronomer. he wrote in sanskrit a book called aryabhatiyam he also stated that day and night were caused by rotation of earth on its axis earlier it was believed that a demon ek rakshasa aata hai to raat ho jati hai wo chale jata hai din ho jata hai but aryabhat was the one who described earth is rotating because of its rotation day and night are formed although it seems that the sun is rising and setting but it's the sun it's the earth that is rotating and revolving he also developed scientific explanation for eclipses also and found a way of circulating of calculating the circumference of a circle which is almost as accurate as we follow today's formula now i have two questions for you the first question is in front of you take about 10 15 seconds to answer this there are three statements first the most important part of temple was mandap second most temple had a space for garbhagriha where people could assemble third a shikhar a tower called shikhar was built on top of the temple out of these if you can understand this clearly one and two are incorrect they have interchange the most important part of temple was garbhagriha where the chief deity was kept mandap was the hall where people could assemble third statement is correct so the answer here is b question number 2 which of these is not correct about the puranas now remember when a question is not correct do pay attention to it. they were recited by in temples by priests then they contain stories about creation of the world and kings they were written in simple sanskrit could be heard by everybody women and shudras who were not allowed to study vedas they could not even listen to the puranas which of these is not correct d is not correct we have just studies women and shudras were allowed to listen to the puranas but the other parts are correct they were not allowed to listen to vedas but to puranas they could listen and they could recite